Are you brand new to photo editing and don't know where to start? Or maybe you just got Luminar Neo and you're looking for a guide to help you get going. Then these seven Luminar Neo tips for super easy photo editing are for you. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. I'm here to help you improve your photo editing or to help you get started if you're a total newbie. So if you're ready, let's dig in. Number one is to crop your image first before you do any editing. You'll find the crop tool over here in the edit panel right under layer properties. When you open the crop tool you have a few options. I recommend clicking on the composition AI button right here. Two of the buttons here have some AI built in or artificial intelligence that helps you do editing faster. This first one, Horizon Alignment, will straighten your image or attempt to straighten it if it's crooked. Let's see how it does here. That's an improvement for sure. Next is the Composition AI button just above it. When you click this one, Luminar Neo will analyze your image and attempt to crop it to improve the composition. Let's see how it works. So it's cropped in a fair bit here and I've done this image a few times and I sort of agree with the cropping because I do want to get rid of this half a person on the lower right and some of the stuff down the bottom here as well as some of the space on the left. So I agree mostly with how much it's cropped in. Now I just find that I have to place it and you can just grab the image and move it around. I want to make sure that I get the top of the steeple and I think I'm just going to expand it a little bit bigger. So I have a little bit of the sidewalk or the base here. And just crop that person out about like that. Like so. The reason I recommend doing cropping before you do editing is because sometimes you'll end up cropping off problem areas that appear on the edge of the image. So if you spend a lot of time trying to handle them, making adjustments and edits, and then end up cropping it off later, you've wasted some of your time and effort. So crop first. Tip number two is to use the develop tool next. If you are shooting raw files, you'll notice that it says develop raw. If you are shooting JPEGs, you won't see this blue raw symbol, but the tool works the same way regardless. If you are shooting raw, you want to make sure that you apply this tool first, right after you crop, of course. Once you open the tool, there's a couple of things inside the develop panel that work really well to help you do editing quickly without spending a lot of time with sliders. The first one is at the top here, camera profile. See where it says Luminar default? Pull this menu down. As long as your camera is supported by Luminar Neo in terms of being able to read the files and the profiles, you may see a list down here under camera or external profiles. Just by choosing one, for example, I'm going to choose camera landscape, you can completely change the look of the image. Notice how much more contrast and vibrance the image has immediately and I haven't done anything to any sliders yet. Let's try camera portrait. Landscape presets usually increase the contrast and saturation of blues and greens and portrait ones from camera usually work on oranges and reds. So depending on the image you have, choose an appropriate profile. But try them all if you want to see what they do, and then just pick the one that is closest to how you'd like your image to look. In this case, I'm going to go with landscape, because look what a great job it does on the sky. The next bit of smart or AI technology in the develop tool is this slider right here called smart contrast. Drag it to the right to increase contrast, and to the left to decrease or flatten the lighting. Notice that when you increase contrast, you also increase color saturation. That's very important, so make note that you don't take it too far. But I'll show you how to dial it back if it's gone a little over the top. 
For this image, I'm going to settle somewhere around plus 23. As a side tip, you'll notice that I have the histogram showing here. If you currently don't see the histogram, just go up to the View menu and click Show, like so. If you're not familiar with the histogram already, make that a priority to spend some time learning it. It's a graphical representation of the tones in your image. Black on the left, gray in the middle, and white on the right. You'll also notice that it represents the three colors that make up images, red, green, and blue. Don't worry too much about that. Just look for, is the image spreading out nicely across the histogram? Are there any spikes at either end? Or is it all bunched up to one side or the other? Those are the things that indicate how your image is represented graphically. What you want to watch out for are spikes in the graph that are going off the end. For example, something like that. If you press the J key on your keyboard, it will tell you if any of the areas of the image are clipping. Red indicates white with no detail, and blue areas indicate black with no detail. Let me undo this, and then just press the J key to hide that. So use the histogram in conjunction with the clipping warnings to make sure that you have the exposure of your image correct. Still in the develop panel, just scroll down a little bit until you see color. Each of these is a totally different section inside the same tool. This is the only place in Luminar that you can find the white balance setting. This is what's going to adjust the tint of your image color wise. Again, if you shot raw format and you click on this pull down menu, you'll see a series of presets the same as you would in your camera. This allows you to choose one of these presets, for example, daylight, cloudy, shade, and so on. Or you can use the eyedropper. This little eyedropper here, when you click on it, becomes unattached and you can then pick a target area in the image that is neutral color, meaning white, gray, or black, Wherever you click, the program will remove the tint that it finds there. Notice if I hover over this side of the building, the squares look a little bit yellowish. So if I click here, it's going to try and set the white balance to remove that yellow. Like that. Now if this wall is not actually white, we've gone too far. To try it again, just activate the tool once more and try a different spot. If there's nothing that is neutral in the image, you may not be able to use the eyedropper. Sometimes it's useful and sometimes it's not. But often, just by clicking somewhere like this, you can get pretty close and then you can tweak the temperature and tint with the sliders below. Remember I said I'd show you where to dial it back if the color went over the top? The saturation slider is right here. So if your colors are going off the chart, dial it back down here. That's one of my pet peeves, especially with beginning photo editors, is the saturation is often too high. So be very careful not to go overboard. I have a video on photo editing sins if you want to watch that one as well. I'll put a link in the description area below for you. So that's it for the develop tool. To close it, just click on the name again. And now you're ready for tip number three. Another really powerful tool in Luminar Neo is the Erase tool. Even though it doesn't say AI next to the name, it has some things that do some automation. Notice I have a lot of dust spots on this image. There happens to be a handy one-click solution for that. So I'm just going to click Remove Dust Spots and wait for Luminar Neo to do the work for me. See that? before and after. It left a couple of spots behind which I was able to easily clean up with the race tool and a few spots. Now there's a second button that says remove power lines. There aren't any in this image. Let me hop back to the other one again. We're back in Cuba again. Can you see the power line that goes from the building down here to the lamppost? I'm going to open the race tool and click remove power lines and see how it does. Wow, 
Look at that. It's gone. It's even removed the wires over here on this part of the building and going right through here. There's some slight imperfections if you look really closely right here and here, but I can easily clean those up with a couple more spots and the erase tool. Let me finish those and I'll be right back. Here I go, hyperspeed mode. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty impressive. Look at all the lines going across the building and between the buildings. So if your camera is prone to getting dust on the sensor, and if you have images like this with power lines, use the object removal AI inside the erase tool to get rid of them. It'll do at least 80% of the work for you. Back to the image of the seagull for tip number three using Enhance AI. There's two AI sliders here, Accent AI, and you'll notice if I take it to the right, it increases and does all kinds of things. It's increasing contrast. You see saturation and color is better. It's also increasing structure and sharpness. So it's doing a lot of things all at once. If there's sky visible in your image, then the bottom slider will be active. If there's no sky, you'll see that it'd be grayed out. When you drag this one up, you can see that it enhances only the sky and not the bird. Be very careful with this one. It's really easy to go overboard. This is what overboard looks like. Make sure you keep the sky looking realistic in terms of color and not over the top. Use these little eyeball icons to check before and after on the tool that you're working with and use the backslash key to see a full before and after. I use those constantly to see if I've gone far enough or to see if I've gone too far. Quick editing tip number five is inside the color tool. When you open this tool, you'll see there's a slider here that's called remove color cast. It's a really handy one. When you have images like this that we can't really determine the color or if it's got a weird shift, maybe you've taken it indoors with some mixed lighting and you can't get rid of it with the white balance, try this slider. I find that it works miracles on images that have a weird cast. While we're still in the color tool, I wanna to talk about tip number six, which is if you want more intense color or saturation, don't use the saturation slider. That may seem counterintuitive, but I use the saturation slider usually to lower the intensity of color. Instead, what I recommend is open the develop tool again and add black to your image. I'm gonna close up the light section. You wanna be able to see the blacks and the white section and the curve section. Even if you don't know how to use these things, if all you do is add some black, watch what happens. So adding black with this slider goes to the left and you can see the slider itself is darker on the left and lighter on the right. So it's indicating to you darker to the left. Look what happens to the color when I go that way. See that? And if we add more white as well, we're increasing the overall contrast of the image and the saturation follows. See the before? And after. If the black slider doesn't go far enough and you want even more, head down to the curve section. The histogram here is the same graph that's up here. Black is on the left, so just grab this bottom dot and this time we're going to the right. We're going to tuck in blacks a little bit. So what that's doing is effectively the same thing but with the curve tool, you can go a lot farther with it. Of course, that's too far. So again, be gentle with these types of adjustments, but you'll notice you don't need to touch the saturation slider to get more color. Now the final tip, tip number seven, is presets. 
even though I've left this for the last tip, you want to make sure that you apply a preset before any other edits. Cropping aside, you can crop at any time. Because if you apply a preset and you've already used develop or enhance or any of the other tools, the preset will overwrite them. Let's have a look. If I click on this one called Forest Stream, I've added it to my favorites. You can see that it does indeed edit the image if we look at the before and after. But if I click on the next one, it completely overwrites everything, including anything that you may have done to the image separately. So if you're going to use a preset, pick one that you like for the style for this image first, and then go and do some tweaks. For example, I might choose Nostalgic Haze for this one, which gives it a little bit of a faded outlook. Once your preset is applied, you can just hop over to the Edit panel and then go to the History, which is over here on the Edits tab, and everything that's been applied with this preset will be listed here. You can then go in and modify any of them. For example, I've gone back to Develop Raw, and I'm just going to bring the highlights down because the image is a little bit too bright, as well as exposure. When you come back up to the top of the edits, you see them all applied and you can carry on from there or go back and tweak any more to your liking. In this case, I'm gonna dial this one back just a little bit to have a little bit more color in the image. Then you can continue editing from there. So just remember, if you're going to use the preset, apply it first. If you're looking for a more complete start to finish, step-by-step -step instruction on Luminar Neo, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. It's everything you need to know about Luminar Neo. If you want to watch more Luminar Neo tutorials, click the video on the screen now. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.